Hi everyone and welcome to Leadership Lives. I am Ashley, your host for this evening. I work at Adventures with Agile and Brighter Work and this is the second talk in the Leadership Live series. Tonight we are thrilled to have Insider CTO Ling Lee and Greg Gigon, who is Head of Engineering Productivity at Direct Line Group. And featured in today's discussion will be a fascinating chat on AI and how AI will be affecting change in the workplace. We have John Sleeper, who will be leading the talk again. And of course, we have the amazing Gemma Rona visually recording the session. Now, why do we run these leadership lives? At AWA, we have always been about giving back to the community. And together with our sister company, Brighter Work, these events seek to share stories from leaders about working in the product, change and leadership spaces. And its mission that through our work and community events like tonight, we make a positive impact in making working life better for everyone. And as we know, AI is a hot topic at the moment in the workplace, but what we want to focus on is the impact that AI will have on change in organizations of all sizes. Over to you, Gemma. Brilliant, thank you, Ashley. So um, we decided as Brighter Work and AWA that we wanted to put through this series of talks together because we really wanted to get to know the leaders that have inspired us better. Um, Brighter Work work as a change, uh, people first change consultancy. And we work, as Ash said, in the areas of product change and leadership. And um, when we started this series, me and John got together and we try to work out who were the leaders that have really inspired us and shaped our careers. And one of those leaders I'm absolutely delighted to have invited and bring you today. Um, this is Greg Gigon. Um, Greg is the Head of Engineering Pro Productivity at Direct Line Group, but I knew him uh, when I was working in RBS, where he was the Head of Software Development and Engineering. Um, Greg had an amazing influence on the developers and the Agile community that he worked with. Um, he was always forward thinking um, and loved to come up with really technical solutions as well as people solutions for tricky and complex problems. And because of that, he won the respect of all of the Agile community and all of the development community that he worked with in um, in RBS at the time. Um, Greg comes from a background where he has been a consul agile consultant at ThoughtWorks. Um, he also does his own blogging, sometimes on the subject of artificial intelligence. And it's no wonder because Greg uh, did his master's in, com in computer science and his major was in artificial intelligence. So, um, He's funny, he's fun, and we're really, really excited to bring him in today to let us know how uh, robots may or may not be taking over the world, and at least letting us know how it might impact leadership styles and what he's seen so far in terms of um, what's been happening in Direct Line Group. Uh, so yeah, very, very much welcome to Greg uh, and then John. Uh, over to you in terms of uh, how you know Ling and why you brought him in as a leader in this space. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Gemma. So, so Ling, Ling and I, we were working together, weren't we? It was probably um, about ten years ago, maybe I think, um, at BMP Paribas. So it's funny we've both got connections. We've both got kind of banking connections here. But yeah, I remember. Ling and I, I was there as a kind of agile coach and we were working together and Ling, you were you were working in quite a technical area and we used to have lots of really interesting conversations about, you know, the things that you were trying to push forward with your teams and your technology solutions. And then there were some sort of big corporate processes and systems that were not always helping, let's say. So now I just remember lots of interesting conversations and, and lots of leadership in terms of how you were trying to pioneer new ways of working and come up with innovative solutions not just on the technology side but also with the teams that you were working with and now i know that you're in a completely different area as a startup founder um in the ai space and you build 
um, lots of AI products to, and the one of the main ones, right, is your pet animal product in terms of being able to people being able to get images and different type products that that are generated through a, AI. I've given that. Just yes. Yes, no, that's correct. Yes, yes, we, we yeah. have actually um, yes been working on that. I can talk about a bit more about it later, and if you yeah. if, if anyone's yeah. interested. Great, great. So yes, welcome to you both. It's so exciting to have you both here. We're going to be talking for about 45 minutes, um, you know, and what I hope to be able to do is just to create the space for us to be able to, uh, able to have a really interesting conversation about, it is such a hot topic, completely agree with that, Ashley, you know, it's, it's just always in the news at the moment, only today, there was some talk about a whistleblower at Tesla who was who was concerned about the driverless cars. And in particular, they were talking about phantom braking, I, I was reading. Um, you know, more recent and in the last month, there was the Bletchley Park AI Summit, where our British Prime Minister was talking about with us being an, an inflection point, an inflection point for another generational technology revolution that we're going through and and he said if we're to seize the benefits we must also address the risks so i think there's a kind of a, a sort of a, maybe a seesaw effect here in terms of people's attitudes to ai but the topic what we're going to talk about today is embracing the future ai and change in the workplace so yeah let's let's just start the conversation um and i guess the first question i'm going to ask to ling if that's all right is what is ai to you i think ai is a new step change and we've seen it i mean i guess that would be being my, my current age at the grand old age 47 we've seen sort of various decades we've had step changes and more so recently so if you go back in time you look at like the industrial revolution uh, things like the, the the loom that was made to then allow us to make clothes faster and all the sort of the the Luddites and people who are against that and then but actually more closer to time we've had the rise of the internet you know, you know back when I was a teenager the internet was a, a you know back in early 1995 98 that's the time that was a new thing that brought about a huge amount of revolution um, then after the internet I think the next revolution the next step change would have been mobile mobile apps um, all, all, all the sort of all the sort of, sort of big data that came came with it. So there's all these step changes, and they were just getting more and more rapid. Just because we as human beings love problem solving, we love you know, and we're built. We always you know, we're, we're the probably only species on the planet that builds tools and that solves problems. Um, so you know, the, the pace of change is just you know a function of what we're doing and um, and, and what we're building. Um, so I think uh, so. There, so I think that's. Um, that's that sort of uh, uh, to me AI is like a the, 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 is the next step change and it's very much embrace it or you know, very much be, be left behind in my opinion. Be part of it or be left behind. Thank you, Lee. Yes. Lee. How about you, Greg? Well, um, I, I look at um, I have a very pragmatic view of of, of this as well. Well, um, to me, I look at this uh, somehow similarly to to Ling. I, I kind of uh, I'm just I look at this as this is our progress in uh in the industrial evolution and we're kind of are moving forwards as well when it comes to inventing new better ways of uh achieving things and ai is yet another tool that we have added into our toolbox of how we can achieve that um coming from the um computer science background knowing I'm not claiming, of course, to be an expert in any of uh, of the insides of working of AIs, but uh, uh, understanding um, how the tools itself work, I definitely feel less intimidated by by them. Um, so, I, knowing uh, what's happening inside that creates uh, the responses, that creates the images, that creates all sorts of different assets, that's um, uh, generative kind of a uh ai with, with that we're talking about probably today most than anything else um uh do that that makes makes it a little bit easier than to to um the the fact how it works internally makes it a bit easier to not be scared of it afraid of it and truly work move more towards um i want to use it to to my benefits i want to 
uh, it's a new tool. I want to learn how to use it to my to my advantage, to my company's advantage, to to the people who work in my team's advantage, etc. Et and how can I lend it um, in the organization in a way that others could benefit it as well? Yeah. So um, to me, it is a um, progress. The, the one that we never stopped having as a, as a humanity, we keep on progressing all the time, you know, from, from square wheels to round wheels and into now into AI as, as one of the, the things that we have to help us um, uh, become better at our jobs, become better at what we're trying to achieve, not only at jobs, but outside as well. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you both. Yeah, so I guess as as technologists you know the, the, these provide tools as you've both said for us to develop and progress and i really like the it's really nice having the uh visual illustration that um Gemma is providing for us as well to nicely summarize that and i'm just also want to just you know acknowledge the people on the call who are listening to this call and you know encourage please please share your thoughts, your comments with us on the chat um, so that, you know, we, we, we want to hear what you think about this, this too. So, yeah, thank you both for the, for the, for the summary. Um, I just wonder if we can, if we reverse it the other way, if this might help us to kind of get a sense of this, this tool. Um, does, do one of you want to answer this next question? What is not AI? What is it not? Can we draw a boundary around it somewhere? That's a good. Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> well, well, it definitely is not what we um, what we fear of as a the sentient being with a own personality wanting to, um, you know, just being shackled by humanity before it actually breaks free and then takes over the world. That's not what it is. Um, it's not how it works as well. Um, a lot of um, a, a lot of um, uh, results of what you see as a as a way of using the tool is a result of some uh, really clever uh, mathematics uh, and statistics in place applied in a form that creates something that we perceive to to look like human interactions, but it's it actually isn't. Um, it's it's close to um, based on years of research of trying to uh, perfect the ways of how the, this the, this mathematical and statistical functions can be used to give us this perception, and it's based uh, it and it's also a possible thanks to enormous amount of data that is available, so we can um, take those those um, functions and models and make them uh, learn. Um, by uh, by applying number of techniques to to kind of a, behave more like humans, uh, which of course comes with its biases because any any amount of the data is going to be generated by humans who have their own opinions, their own minds, and so on, so on. But so it's sorry. Coming back to your original question, what I'm thinking of it, it's it's it. Uh, the best thing to to think about is, uh, in my perception, is that this is another tool. It's not, it's not conscious. It do, it's not malicious <laughs> by by its design, and used in the right way, gives us um, uh, well used for the whatever benefits you want it to be used. And it's it's a very useful tool um, to have. I like that. It's not conscious. Uh, you know, I think that that's 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 really interesting, and and uh, and, and I tell you not... what, I tell, do, do you know what, John? Even if it if it if it if it, if, it, if it's if you ask it questions about its consciousness, it's going to uh, reply in a way that you might perceive that oh, this is only a conscious person would reply something like this. It's still just a clever way of of generating so, the constant. So so it could so it could. Um make us think that it's conscious yes and no it really depends on, on how you how when you interact with it how you're going yeah. to ask questions and want what you want uh, those 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 questions and those prompts that we use especially for our typical text interactions it will you, you can make it 
to behave in a specific way only because you told it to so if you would yeah. uh, if you if you were to ask any of the available models to behave uh, as if you have conscious and 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 act like so in the next convers in the follow up conversations we have and then you're going to start interacting and, yeah. and asking it things that's how it, it will behave i mean it's it, it's interesting because it's definitely an area that is talked a lot about in the media um in terms of the potential that ai can you know bring about some kind of extreme potentially even apocalyptic type scenarios we've all heard of it right so so what 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 do you what do you think link what, what would you say it is not it is not. Um, I don't think it, it's, it's, again, it's, it's not sort of sentient. It's, um, I, I kind of like boil down in simple ways of how to look at AI. And if we go back to our school days of GCSE and we're doing science experiments and we're doing, okay, right, let's, uh, let's take a, you know, a, a, a bottle of water or you know, in a little beaker of flask, measure the temperature. And then you go, okay, well, at temperature 100 degrees C, we know it turns into steam. At temperature zero, it turns into ice. And then you can draw a straight line and, you know, you can, as, as you're doing experiment, you can draw a sort of straight line, put little plot, plot, plots on a graph and draw a straight line. And that straight line allows you then to predict what things happen for a given X, Y sort of space. Um, so now with AI and with all the machinery we have, we can do experiments similar to this, but on hundreds of hundreds of different of thousands of variables really so so imagine now rather than doing some sort of an xy coordinate you're doing you're basically in the case of a large language model you're doing a prediction what you're doing is you're trying to predict what the next word should be given the current string of words that you put in as your prompt and and so when it's so a large language model is all it's doing is trying to predict given what your input what the next word should be and then what the next next word should be after that um, yeah, and and it's only done that by internally. It has this huge sort of well, I say it's a huge model which looks back at all the sort of previous words and applies sort of a weighting to it, and then predicts does that prediction. So that's the sort of the language model. Um, image models are, you know, have their own um, sort of uh, models again, and how they sort of compress in you know, sort, of, sort of compresses data and so forth. So from a from purely from a sort of mathematical sort of computer science background or machine learning background, it, it is. Effectively, these models are just a huge bunch of numbers with a very, very complicated formula. So maybe we go as far as y equals mx squared in, in our GCSEs, but this is like y equals a plus ax plus b x squared plus da 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 with like huge, huge polynomials, which we can't fathom. But with the fact that we have GPUs that are very good at doing matrix multiplications and all the sort of the maths that we kind of do back in A levels and what have you, um, we, we build these models that effectively predict uh, a lot of genetic AI is sort of predicting what should happen next, um, and so all it's doing is predicting, you know, given a sentence what that should be, or if it's in, case, in the case of programming language, predicting what the next statement in a programming language might be. And if you, you know, if you get the model right, then it, you know, gets it more right. Um, and yeah. uh, so, so again, it's just a tool. Yeah, no. So I, 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 I kind of, I'm not sure I get all of the some of the inner complexities of that. But to me, it sound sounded like you're kind of saying it provides an opportunity for us to use lots of powerful technology to e effectively conduct experiments and and prove or disprove hypotheses as a as a result of that, um, and. So coming back to what it is not, it's it doesn't it doesn't have this, you know, sentient consciousness to to kind of use both of your languages, um, which is helpful. But but people still perceive it in the in uh, in the way that it maybe it can, you know, that that that, that fear is out there. Right. So so I guess I'm just I'm just wondering as leaders and as leaders within organizations how do how do we deal with that as leaders i think it might certainly from my team uh, as a as a small a sort of small team constrained resources we use it to basically give us all superpowers so um so for example you know like so if you're a junior developer you can use it to 
you know, answer questions to code that you may not know necessarily. It won't, you still need a, a certain level of experience to be able to use the results of the tools correctly. Um, so for example, you know, in different spaces, they're not just in programming, but for example, in, you can ask, you know, so sort of chat GPT, these are large language models, questions about law, it will probably get it 80% correct, but, you, but first you probably need to know what the subject domain yourself to get going and then to understand some of perhaps the nuances which you know if at the end of the day these models are trying to predict what the words what words should come next it can get it wrong and that's also known as hallucination so um so we use it effectively to give superpowers to the team which means we can build software faster we can iterate faster yeah. we can try out new things faster um just today for example uh, in our startup we're just trying to do uh sort of a, a marketing and so rather than sort of drawing stuff we kind of used so, uh, some of the image generation tools to kind of give us sort of ideas of what thing what you know sort of what marketing adverts we could create and stuff so it's a quick way to prototype things so so that, that's that's what we're, we're we're partly partly using it for great so it can help to speed things up uh, you can kind of automate things and get things done more quickly yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also, you know, it's very much provisory on who's welding it. So, you know, I've, 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 I've you know, if I've had uh, junior interns, I've shown them this tool, and sometimes they just, you know, it's, they, you know, they need a bit more handholding. But if you're an experienced, you know, developer, or if you're perhaps an experienced lawyer, you know, it can get rid of some of the more mundane day-to-day yeah. -day bits of work that you know, yeah. and then leave you with more brain brain capacity to think about other things, which so, I think is a beautiful thing. It, so that's 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 really interesting, and and I I guess I just wonder. Um, I've actually got a question from Phil, that I, but I just want to ask one more question before I bring that one into you. Um, so so if it can help us to do that, how do we alleviate people's concerns? Because I still want to go back to that. You know, whether it's true or not, there's a perception of of fear. So how do we alleviate people's concerns about that? Well, that's that's a really interesting one. I think. If you look at uh, if you look at the rise of the internet and the social media, and you might say, well, you know, social media. Well, you know, think about when internet was in, in developed. We suddenly have web agencies. We suddenly have web developers. You have a whole industry of new things that needs to be done that previously we no one would ever imagine would happen. Um, you had, um, for example, today, social media influences. That's you know that that is a whole industry in itself that suddenly like empowers. Like you know, if you're if you're particular, if you're if you're an influencer, you might be particularly interested in a very niche thing. Suddenly, you can build an audience, and you have this sort of new power to kind of you know. There's a new in cottage industries, from small yeah. to big. You know, so I think there's that, that you know gives a huge amount of opportunity. So I yeah. feel the people who are, are fearful maybe they're just perhaps set in their ways but i think personally you should embrace this and look at this as yeah as a whole new wave of opportunity out there and that that should be the the, the you know I think the, the default great thanks mm -hmm. Link. and i'm just going to add a really great quote that um from tim robertson he's added in the chat ai isn't a replacement for human ingeniousness but a co-pilot to release our potential i like that nice yes, what are your thoughts very good quote? Quote. yeah uh, well uh, it's, it's so I, I think particularly on your point of how do we deal with um, people being scared of this as a technology, I think, again, looking back in the history, there's always going to be um, the case. People are afraid of change, of the new things coming because it's unknown and this is our primal instinct, so we're, we're, we're scared of it. Um, the only way to deal with this pretty much is to show that it can it's it's not harmful by itself right so uh, it's 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 educate and show that the technology by itself is not harmful of course everything as a every tool can be used to to inflict harm you know you can you can use harma to help you do a diy but you can also use harma in a very different way which is going to cause the damage same with ai it depends of who's using the tool um and that's going to be, uh, and in what way. So, of course, that's always going to have an effect. But the bottom yeah. line is, but technology by itself, and this is a piece of technology, this is yet another tool, it's not evil. It's not designed with evil purposes in mind. There's nothing to be scared of. And to be honest, um, 
if you look back in the history, um, especially as a leader and the, in the organization, in the business, if you don't adapt in the new situation, then you will become irrelevant. So you definitely don't want this to be the case as a business. So if you're, a, if you're doing it a little bit later, it's possibly fine. But if you completely reject a new technologies to bring them into your, 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 your business, uh, into organization and how it's been used in what way, um, finding some ingenious ways of getting it in, um, helping you do uh, people do the work, but also um, mixing it into your business processes. If you really reject that as a as as a industrial revolution, yet another one coming, you as a business will become irrelevant. It's just like the conversation we would have today. That um, I can't think of a single bank that rejected online presence that still exists. Right? Yeah. Is there a single bank in the world that doesn't exist yes. other than a, a a a brick and mortar that you can walk yes. in and put the money in? Perhaps there are a few. But they're not going to, if, if there are, but they're not going to be really uh, relevant yeah. in the grand scheme of global economy yeah. and yeah. presence and so on. So yeah, you kind of indeed. And to... just just to add to Greg, yeah. there's plenty of other examples. You know, so for example, mm -hmm. if you look at the rise of the internet, what's happened to the yellow pages? You know, director inquiries that's moved on. If you look at companies sadly like Kodak, you know, they were a, a household name. Um, you look at uh, things like um, Nokia, you know, you think, oh, wow, that, that, once upon a time, Nokia was the mobile phone and also Blackberries, they were the yeah. mobile phone companies, right? And everyone had those and suddenly Apple came along, but built an even better tool and everyone embraced that. And so I feel like, you know, this, this AI is the next step. And if you're not actively looking and pursuing and seeing what it could do and help in your business, um, whether that's building things or whether it's helping you with management or optimizing X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. then, you know, do you want to be a dinosaur? Do you want to, to have your business turn into a dinosaur and a, and a relic and yeah. become consigned to history? Or do you want to be, you know, stay, stay current and stay present? Mm -hmm. so. I, I think yeah. so to, add, add to, to, to this quickly before we move on to the next topic, John, is that um, the it once we deal with the, the the educational aspect of explaining what the technology is about, making sure that uh, people understand um, that it is another tool that you can use to your advantage, then luckily when it it, it moves on into the next stage, which is you no longer fear the actual tool. You can start using it and you can start figuring figuring out and finding the best ways how you can get it into your organization. Luckily, we're still in the early stages. So for businesses that don't do anything specific in, with AI, but the normal, any other type of businesses in banking, insurance, startups and so on that do anything else, um, we're still in the early stages of these tools to coming in. They still develop at a rapid space, but they still develop. So they there's still ways of how we find where we can use them, whether we use them in uh, uh, bringing them to help us with coding and so on. Um, and I completely agree with the previous uh, uh, point that Ling was made that um, for, um, for people who are not necessarily like, giving it to a developers it's it's not a tool that's going to turn a newbie or yellow uh, come someone completely um uh, yellow in the space into a, a kick-ass developer that's never going to happen right <laughs> you have to have some experience and know how to use the tool and especially that it does make mistakes it does hallucinate and so on um looking at chat gpt now uh, if i look at the below in a small print it says it's it, chat gpt makes mistakes consider checking information right yes, yes yeah. i need we need to and yeah. i've seen some rather horrendous code as well generated by chat gpt that well, i would have never written but um yeah. you know it's it's it is learn it, it is becoming better and those tools are slowly appearing better and better and we need to learn in the organization where to place them and where to use them for what benefits. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. And and as you say, the, the tools will evolve and develop um, and, you know, will get better, hopefully. Um, 
there's a i want to come back to this question from phil though because i think it moves the conversation on quite nicely so phil hornby uh, and thank you for the question phil phil he asks how do we decide what are suitable uses so what a good kind of what a good place is to 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 bring this to and so he he's just um makes a adds a little bit more so he he's, he says when we consider things like the energy demand that gen that gen ai is creating and thinking about you know climate change and the impact of you know the amount of energy we use in different scenarios so he says creating a single image on dal e takes as much energy as charging your smartphone so we have to make i think i think you're suggesting you know we have to make smart choices about where it's worth it where is it worth it where is it worth putting that you know that amount of energy into it i think the dali and the the, the, the scale of the, the energy for a smartphone to make a dali picture is not quite right um you know, I'm just going to go tech for five for, for, for one minute, and you know, just to just to set the things straight. So, you know, a GPU is about 300 watts, running at 300 watts. So, and it takes around about 10 seconds to generate an image. So, you know, 300 watts is what a kettle is. What a, a three kit about one one or two three kilowatts. So we're talking, you know, uh, you know, the, a second or two of running a kettle, basically, it's getting temperature. So, so just to correct that, that. That, that that is not but what is important what is where where the energy consumption takes place is actually doing all the mathematics to create this model to create the numbers for the model so that's so that that's, that's the training and that can take months and months and months to just consume all that data but once you have this magic formula um so for example the uh, you know drawing an image that that formula is compressed into the size of a dvd and then to to basically get an image out it's you know it's the, the amount of energy required is quite small but if you add if you then fact if you have to factor the energy to come to that formula it's quite a lot um yeah mm -hmm. so but the, okay. from an organization to answer your question but from an organization's perspective i suppose it's it's um i, I guess it's, it's um you know it as with any business decision you look at it from potentially from business process perspective energy time um, improving your processes, improving your workflow. Does it improve the, you know, the well-being of your employees, for example? So, you know, rather than, I, mean, I remember, you know, working very long hours uh, back in the day, uh, in the investment banking days. Um, and actually, if you could introduce things which could help people work faster, then actually maybe, you know, they could be, they'll be less stressed. You have a happier employee workplace. You then have more mental capacity to think about Mm. other things other business problems um ways of doing things more intuitively um room for innovation um so i think it helps to sort of reduce the sort of mental load and uh, and mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. you know any organization will have and you know the, the, yeah. perhaps the paperwork and you know, all sorts um it's this yeah which is the lowest hanging fruit in your organization that you think could that you would mm -hmm. love to solve or have that problem go away and solved by ai yes this is a lot of good points. Uh, I think the um, and also the back to the original question about how do you how do you choose where do you, yeah. where do you land it and how do you land it? Um, I, I think um, for me at least um, where I see it at the moment is um, when I think about my day, where a lot of my mental capacity goes is a lot of mundane tasks that could have been done but either about someone else or by something else. So this this is where it becomes a really good candidate for uh, things um, that is not a very not does not require a lot of creative thinking. So that's where AI can help you with um, summarizing the text, automating things that could be automated for auto replies. Um, it, it's it's really useful when it comes to um, once you're a software developer who's experienced, um, it helps you with uh, getting to, we tend to think about problems in, in on a high level. And then when it comes to details, sometimes we're, we're bugged by tons of documentation and specifics and trying to figure things out. This is where it's also very useful. And once you experience, um, 
in using, uh, sorry, in, not, not in using the tool, of course, in using the tool as well, but they're, they're a version of, of, of kind of a um, tools that help aid programming, which is GitHub Compiler, the uh, AWS Code Whisperer. Um, there's, there's a couple of other, other tools there on the market that, that they are helping with dealing with the, the silly easy things. They don't replace the most complex things, which is uh, in my head. I need to figure out how I'm going to tackle this as a problem, and you know that's 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 where humans are doing the creative yeah. part, and then robots swoop in with tidying and tidying the knots and figuring out the yeah. rest. And and there's a lot of things around software development, but also in your day to day. If you're away from technology, if you're a manager, imagine the time it takes you just to summarize a meeting, construct the minutes with Office Copilot or any other tools that are coming available. Uh, as long as you record the meeting, you already have a summary there. You don't, you don't, you don't have to spend time to go through your notes. You can actually start using it more creatively. You can start asking questions. Um, how many different actions did we note in that meeting? Yeah. So you don't have to, even if you missed something, you don't have to rewatch it. And it, it just helps with saving you the time so you can start using it on the more creative and challenging things rather than dealing with such a time-consuming, mundane things. It's it's re really interesting what you're both saying. And um, yeah, just conscious we're kind of coming to the last 10 minutes of, the, of, of our talk. And so, yeah, there's something about the... Um, the sort of mundane tasks, if I can put it like that, um, we can automate. And the more creative work will still need human interaction. I think I think you were saying that. So so I just want to, if if I may, just come back to this question as leaders of in, in our organizations, how do we help the human side of that? Because it's a really positive message. So are you asking, John, how do we help? How do we bring well, the message? How do we? Yeah, I, I suppose I'm saying that, you know, there's this perception, mm -hmm. there's this kind of dark, slightly dark, murky perception of AI. And actually what mm -hmm. you're both, you're both painting a much more positive message. And, and how, you know, so how can we help to deliver that message in, in, in our organizations? I think it. Well, I think it depends on various organisations. So, so, like, yeah. I, don't know, I still have you know, colleagues, um, ex colleagues, who are still in the financial industry and other industries where use of AI tools is somewhat more restricted and limited due to, you know, rightly so, so their data and that that data is is very key and important that needs to be that needs to be held in, in inside. But you can now get um, the ability to have these AI models run inside. You know your own infrastructure and what have you we, we we have that ourselves we have our own models and that kind of stuff um and i think it's it's a sort of a you know for my sort of small organization i you know i encourage it from a top down and just say and you know we run through examples of how you do things how we can do things faster with it um how it can help us and so forth so i think maybe that's the from from that perspective it's a sort of top down encourage uh, and and show show by example that you know this is actually okay you know i i, I use a tool myself uh, i'm not ashamed of it um if that makes it ashamed is one it's more like a you know it's, it's this kind of lead lead by example which is you know, yeah. a very classic um leadership um sort of thing but if um you know i, I think you, you know as a leader you, yeah. you you should be embracing it and showing you know, i think that's, guiding I think, I think that's useful yeah you know lead by example i i guess you know dem mm -hmm. show others that might be might be demonstrating that as well call, call out those sort of activities that others are maybe are doing to try to demonstrate and help people's concern that that that's what i hear mm -hmm. there greg did yeah, you want to do anything yeah i just wanted to add but that's exactly that's uh that's a good approach as a lead by example so one of one of the first things i started to do as soon as the tools became available is i jumped on a bandwagon to test them and to see them how does that change any any ways of how I work doesn't make me more productive, doesn't make me less productive. And I learned by using those tools 
on also how to use them effectively. And I learned that I do have more time to start doing other things, you know, and suddenly um, I feel more accomplished as well at my job because I've managed to not only achieve more, but I also managed to tackle the, hard, the hardest problems because I had the time to do that. So that that's really that's a really um, good experience that I had. And I started to talk to others about it. So I started to see the information, see the message of this is actually, guys, this is pretty useful uh, if you use it. And here's how I used it for X, Y, Z. And look, this is the, the, the how kind of it helped me. Um, I think with every organization, if you want to adopt certain tools and certain technologies, it's going to come with it with the typical curve of adoption, which is you know the early adopters, then then enthusiasts, and then the rest and laggards at the end. And you, you're going to deal with this adoption everywhere, as always with any technology, any any sort of fad and so on. Um, but um, you have to start somewhere, and if you recognized. And you should, because there's no other way that there are benefits from using these tools. Then, of course, um, trying things out, learning from others, um, looking at what others have learned from using the tools. And uh, as an example, I can cite a number of research that uh, was done around uh, productivity and when it comes to coding. Uh, and um, based on that research, it turns out that uh, and with less experienced engineers and, and more experienced engineers, it, it's, it's been taken between 5 to 25% of improvement when it comes to uh, productivity, you know, output. Uh, so that's a pretty good number to, to use as a, a, as a thing to justify of why you would use the tool. Um, suddenly, thinking about if you have 100 developers, suddenly you, you, you can look at this as, oh, they're working 125% of the time on average or maybe a little bit less so you know that's that's pretty good <laughs> by uh, maybe the cost of the tool is a salary of one or two developers but i'm getting 25 for free you know i'll take that thank you very much um so um it's it's all of those kind of you start looking at the benefits you start yeah. to try things yourself and it slowly grows in the organization so you, you plant the seeds um and of course it's helpful when you find a group of early adopters and enthusiasts yeah. who are willing to try that out yeah and you plant the seeds and you know it grows and that's that's how yeah how we can... plant the seeds and look for the evidence of success and and mm -hmm. help to to point them out to people so that's great thank you so we've just got a couple more minutes shall i just ask you a couple of quick fire questions in the last couple of sure. minutes okay so what's your favorite ai what, what do we call it a search engine the ai <laughs> search engine i don't know what the right way of you know we used to have google what's the what's your favorite equivalent of that from an ai perspective um well for me gpt4 uh is obviously the, the clear winner by a long shot but i do like a lot of the open source stuff that's come out llama 2 and more recently the mr 7b models which you can then customize and fine tune and you know and and sort of add your own data to it and run it in your own time in your own on your own server so that, that's my all right thanks lee greg yeah uh, i would have to i i have to line with link yes GPT you agree by 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 far is one of the uh, best tools at the moment and uh the, the the speed of development and what they do to additional functionality without the plugins in just the basic chat is amazing uh so yeah i'll have to side with ling on this it's, okay it's, for me it works it's the best you'll go with ling okay great thanks and what so i've seen some people do this when they sort of create these photos of themselves using ai is that something you have done and how would you what would you how would you tell me if i wanted to do that what would i do what would you tell how would i do it well it's actually one of our products on our, on our site on over at ai draw ai funnily, funnily enough so oh, we can uh, like set that up wasn't it yes <laughs> exactly <laughs> but we also, but funnily enough uh we, we we just released a new product called pet tunes which yeah. is a similar concept but actually oh. um you, it's it's uh it runs fairly fast in, in the sense that uh it takes one picture of a pet converts into a really cool thing and then we hook it up into a printer and we can create christmas gifts sorry for the promotion but uh but 
So we built that in about just under a month, which is building something from scratch to nice. fully release product integrated with wow. a bunch of APIs for printing and you know an e-commerce based an e-commerce platform right. in a month. I knew, I knew you did it still. for pets, but I just didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Can you do? Could I do it for me? You can do it for you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Greg? Is that something you've done? Uh, but- I've uh, I've not done any of those um, specially generated uh, portraits of myself yet. Uh, I'm I'm actually a little bit worried of what could come out on the other side. So. <laughs> right? Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, less yeah. flattering. I, I have that concern about myself as well. Yeah. So, final question, and then we're going to have to end because it is it's quarter two. Is AI the best thing since sliced bread? Ooh, Slice bread question. with Marmite wins. <laughs> with Marmite, <laughs> that's a, that's a yes. there you go. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, it's it's definitely better than the blockchain uh, fad that's been re- you know died slowly, you know died off recently, and uh, it, it's because of its practicality is also de- and achievability is also better yeah. than the quantum computing. So the last the the recent things. Um, I think I wouldn't put it on the same level as internet. That's probably still a winner, but um, yeah, it's, it's pretty close. <laughs> it's up there. Brilliant. Listen, thank you both so much. I've really enjoyed um, being able to have this conversation with you both. And I just want to point you all to the amazing visual image that Gemma is has been doing as we've been speaking Thank you, John. Yeah, it's um, it's going to need a little bit of tidying up, but I can walk you through the summary if you like. Um, yeah, please do. It's been absolutely fascinating conversation. A lot of like cool imagery that kind of came out as a result of this. Um, so just in terms of understanding a little bit about how um how we're kind of seeing AI from that leadership perspective, it was really clear that both Greg and Ling were seeing the this as like part of our human development um it's a part of the kind of tools that um we're kind of we're able to kind of build our human capability off the back of so to, to taking us through from the industrial revolution uh the age of the old kind of uh internet onto apps and phones and then really kind of um this new age of where we're able to kind of gather together huge amounts of data um and make that work really cleverly with maths an algorithm to create these kind of um, essentially models of prediction, um, as if I understood uh, what was kind of being said correctly, um, that might even appear that it has some kind of consciousness, uh, but we have been reassured very thoroughly by Greg that it is not conscious. Um, so understanding a little bit about how that they were seeing this as a positive, um, it's got AI's got the ability to kind of assist uh, humans in their more like mundane or simple tasks. So that might be summarizing things or putting things together, um, maybe putting together a suggested agenda or even minutes and actions. And that really then leaves space for human creativity. So a lot of things that we can see, um, we can see there really developing um our abilities to kind of get stuff done faster but also enhance our capability so that um we can do a little bit less of the mundane stuff on the question of is ai scary (laughs) um we've got the idea here that the tools themselves are not inherently evil it just depends on what you do with them um And actually, if we want to be kind of leaders in this field and get all of the benefits of AI, then as leaders, we need to lead by example, Um, really kind of show and demonstrate the benefits and then just plant the seeds for the early adopters. Uh, So, like I say, I'm going to be doing a little bit of tidying up of this image. um, But once I have done that tidying up, we'll be able to share it with everybody. Looks amazing. Really looks mm. amazing, Gemma. I love yeah. it. Thank you yeah. so much. Well done. Uh, yeah, thank Very you nice. so much for that conversation. It's been really interesting. I feel like there's like a wealth of information there that we can then we can share using that visual as well. So thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much.
So yeah, um, for those of you uh, who are joining us next time, we're going to be going um, live again with some new leaders in February. So looking forward to seeing you all then. Thanks very much. See you.